Welcome to lecture four on the strategic asset allocation decision. So the asset allocation decision is one of two key decisions that a portfolio manager needs to make in order to implement their investment philosophy. Those two key decisions are asset allocation and security selection. So asset allocation is the decision of how to allocate your total wealth across asset classes. A simple example, you might decide to allocate 40% of your wealth to equities, 30% of your wealth to properties, and 30% of your wealth to bonds. Now, asset allocation is actually the single most important part of portfolio management. This is because studies have shown that between 90 and 97% of variation in the performance across fund managers can actually be explained by their asset allocation decision. So while many of us, when we think about portfolio management, really focus on security selection, that is, picking which stock's going to outperform the other, it's actually asset allocation that needs to become a key point of focus. Now there are two main approaches that can be taken to the asset allocation decision, that is strategic asset allocation and tactical asset allocation. Strategic asset allocation is about identifying an optimal long-term asset allocation based on the particular characteristics and preferences of the investor. Now when we talk about preferences of the investor, the main preference that we focus on is their degree of risk aversion. An investor will then hold that strategic asset allocation allocation, only changing their asset allocation at the end of each year to rebalance back to their preferred uh, portfolio holdings, and also potentially adjusting over the long term as the investor's characteristics change with time. Tactical asset allocation is market timing. That is, allocating across asset classes based on your belief as to how markets are going to perform in the future. If you're very confident that markets are going to do well over the forthcoming year, you'll allocate into high risk asset classes such as equity. Whereas if you think that financial markets are going to perform poorly, you'll allocate most of your wealth into defensive asset classes or cash. So as I spoke about earlier, the strategic asset allocation is about bringing in the individual investor's own characteristics and using that to determine what is their optimal asset allocation. The main characteristic we focus on is the investor's risk aversion. Now, economic theory tells us that investors as a whole are risk averse. That is, they require an additional expected return in order to invest in an asset that has a high level of risk. However, the degree of risk aversion differs. Some investors are more risk averse than others. And this degree of risk aversion gets taken into account as part of strategic asset allocation. So the optimal strategic asset allocation decision for a highly risk averse investor is going to contain a greater proportion in low risk or defensive asset classes. Whereas if you've got a low degree of risk aversion, you're gonna have a higher exposure to more aggressive asset classes such as equity. Now we can think of the basic asset allocation decision as allocating across a risky portfolio, let's say a portfolio of equities and the risk free rate. This is the basic asset allocation decision that most finance theory is based on. If you think, for example, uh, the capital allocation line in the, in the capital asset pricing model, that's just a movement along that, that line between the risky portfolio and the risk-free rate. When deciding where to be along that capital allocation line, all of those portfolios should provide uh, for the average investor, the same level of utility, but when we take into account individual uh, risk aversion and, and differences, what we'll find is different investors will actually prefer to be different points along that capital allocation line. So if we're gonna take risk aversion into account when we're coming up with uh, which asset allocation or which position of, along that capital allocation line uh, an investor will find optimal for their own preferences, we need to identify how we can actually measure risk aversion. And there's a problem because risk aversion is a concept rather than some tangible number that we can objectively measure. So we need proxies for risk aversion. And this can be quite difficult because we can think of risk aversion, something uh, akin to risk aversion might be pain. And think about when you attend a hospital, a doctor is trying to get a measure of how much pain you are in. There is no device that a doctor can strap to you to actually get an accurate measure of your pain. They have to ask you questions or do tests to try to get some determination. 
The same applies to risk aversion. So portfolio managers can't strap a device to investors to see how risk averse they are. So different approaches are adopted. A common approach is the use of surveys. So the surveys will contain questions whereby uh, the particular preferences of an investor can be identified through their response to survey questions such as uh, how much uh, are they willing to pay for a risky gamble, for example. Another way to identify the risk aversion of an individual investor is to actually, rather than focus on their preferences through a survey, is to look at their actions. So we can actually look at what asset allocation decision investors themselves make. So how do they decide to, to allocate their assets? And based on that asset allocation, we can reverse engineer what their degree of risk aversion actually is. So for example, we can look at people's investment in superannuation. So in superannuation, you have the choice across approximately eight different portfolios that range from highly aggressive, uh, high growth portfolios through to very defensive portfolios. The particular portfolio that an individual investor chooses will have an underlying asset allocation decision. And if we can assume that they've chosen that particular portfolio on the basis that it is the portfolio that maximizes their utility, we can then actually derive uh, how risk averse they are. So while the common approach to strategic asset allocation is to look at an investor's degree of risk aversion and uh, identify their optimal allocation, asset allocation accordingly, an alternative approach has been suggested by Brown. Brown suggests that uh, instead of looking at different asset allocations for different investors, there might actually be one long run buy and hold strategic asset allocation decision that does have benefits for all investors. And what Brown suggests is an equally weighted combination of four different asset classes. Brown suggests that in order to balance across all different stages of the business cycle and to, uh, is to diversify uh, across all different seasons, is to have 25% of your wealth in equities, 25% of your wealth in gold, 25% of your wealth in government bonds or treasuries, and 25% of your wealth in cash. So by diversifying across four asset classes in this way, uh, the idea is that uh, you can uh, each asset class will perform well under one of the four basic economic conditions. So in times of prosperity, this is good for, for the stocks and also for bonds. Periods of recession is good for cash. Periods of deflation is good for both bonds and cash. And periods of inflation is good for gold. So we've got one of the asset classes will do well across all four stages of the business cycle and we should achieve diversification across these four different asset classes such that we have a significant dampening of volatility across the cycle and investors will earn uh, an expected return uh, of a generally about 3 or 4% above inflation uh, for a very low level of risk. Now this is a strategic approach to asset allocation because it's a uh, long-term uh, buy and hold asset allocation decision whereby we're looking to uh, maximise the utility preference of the investor through, through holding these four different asset classes. Now Brown's just one example of uh, an alternative approach to strategic asset allocation. Uh, there's several others but this is a, an interesting case study that I suggest that you are uh, reading further depth for yourself. Thank you for listening to topic number four on strategic asset allocation.